Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, the Community Preservation uh, Commission's uh, committee's discussion. Um, my name is Diane Proctor, and I'm chairing uh, the committee this year. Uh, we're going to call roll first um, as an order of business uh, for all of our guests, and there are quite a few. Welcome, uh, Sarah Grimwood. Um, Sarah Grimwood, I'm the appoint. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sarah Grimwood, I'm the appointee from the Natural Resources Commission. Thank you, Sarah. Nancy? Nancy Nelson, Historical Commission appointee. Nancy, your, your voice is a little low. Can you turn up your volume slightly? Yeah. Yeah? Can you hear me better now? Okay. Yep. <laughs> is that better? Okay. Yeah, wait. That's <laughs> okay. 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 Nancy Nelson, Historical Commission appointee. Thank you. Burton? A Burton Flint Select Board appointee. Thank you. John Cratsley. Uh, John Cratsley, Select Board appointee. Thank you. Paul? Paul Baum, Recreation Commission appointee. Thank you. And Charles, hello. Wait, Charles, you're muted, I'm afraid. Charles Phillips, um, oh, Housing is. Authority appointee. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> Diane Proctor, uh, select board appointee. I was saying before we started uh, that I think I found someone who is an architect who may be joining our committee um, uh, because I think that Tom's expertise, Tom Kearns, really did make a, a, a nice difference uh, for us. And her name is Eve Eisenberg, and I'm get, going to have a chance to speak with her extensively tomorrow, unfortunately, after this meeting. Uh, but she has been taking her daughter to her first year of college. So all the rites of passage that go with that <laughs> it required that her attention be there. Um, first on our agenda is an opportunity uh, to introduce the CPC and an overview of the application process. Um, and Anne Clifford, would you be willing to do this for us? And then, for those of you who don't know, Anne Clifford is our new staff liaison person and she's superb. She knows an enormous amount about CPC um, stuff. So we're very lucky to have her. Are you able to see the screen? We're ready. Yep. Anne, are you going to be doing the speaking? Oh, um, I'm sorry, Diane, I thought you were since you had done it last time. Okay, Congress Community Preservation Committee, CPC. Some people refer to it as the CPA um, tr from traditional, um, uh, from those who were originally involved in it. So if you hear CPA as opposed to CPC, uh, then, then that's the reason. Um, thank you, the next slide, please. Uh, the 1.5% out of a possible 3% charge on real estate taxes um, and tax bills, uh, the CPA and Concord. The first $100,000 of taxable value is exempt. Persons with income less than 80% of the area median income are also exempt. Seniors with income less than 100% of area median income are also exempt. Locally raised funds are matched in a percentage basis by funds in the state community preservation fund. Thank you. Um, I forwarded to each of you um, uh, this morning or perhaps last evening rather late, uh, Stuart Saganor's um, most newest um, communication with, with, with CPC committees. Very interesting and very helpful. I mention that because the person in charge of the state CPC is Stuart Saganor. And he has proven a, a wise counsel for us as we've moved through various questions and considerations um, over the last couple of years. The CPA property tax surcharge, uh, the median CPA surcharge and the median tax bill is presented uh, in this particular slide. So you can see that 
last year, it was about $193. Um, out of 14.335, thank you. We are able to take, we are able to take action in four different areas. The first is community housing projects. And you see before you various ones that the CPA has supported over time. The Peter Buckley Terrace up here on the upper left, Walden Street in Concord Housing Trust, Alali Woods, the CHDC, and a four unit Emerson Annex in the town and CHDC. Um, Concord Housing Development Corporation is what the CHDC stands for, for those who are unfamiliar with that, and they help to manage our work. Thank you. The second area which we own, the, the, the building um, on, uh, on the Giro property and that, that has been in, initiated. And so there's a lot of, there's much good work um, that the CPC has started going forward in our town. Uh, then we can contribute to historic, we bring the slide down a wee bit, just a little bit, please. No, uh, down a little bit so we can see the title if you could and historic preservation. Um, and about 35% of our funding has gone to historic preservation. You see this beautiful portrait, which hangs in town hall, the town hall exterior re re uh, renovation, the Thoreau Birth House, or Thoreau, as Concordians tend to, call, uh, tend, tend to pronounce it, and um, the, the Nashitalk uh, Bridge Restoration, town of Concord. Thank you. We also can contribute to open space and 17% of our funds so far have done that. Um, there's the old calf pasture habitat res restoration, the Warner's Pond Dam, the Giro land acquisition in the town of Concord, Concord and the Hubbard Brook Farm Field in the town of Concord and Concord Land Conservation Trust. Thank you. And the fourth area is recreation. Uh, the, um, the, the CCH, uh, <clears throat> the Concord Carlisle High School field renovations, phases one, two, and three, uh, we contributed to. Many of you may know that there is a, a field <clears throat> on the high school property right now uh, that is also going to be coming and needing renovation and how that goes forward and to what degree we become involved and that'll be something we'll have to watch out for this year. White Pond Restoration Project. And if you haven't been down to see what, how the White Pond Restoration Project has, has developed, it's, it's much worth your time, just as in the Giro property. And here is the very field I was talking about, the Dove White Plain Fields. Now, they're going to need renovation this year. And whether they use artificial turf or real turf and all sorts of discussions, I suspect will be forthcoming and probably be discussed by our committee. And then there's the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. And we're all very familiar with that. And it's been um, going on for, does anybody know how many years the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail has been under development? Diane, I think probably since about 1986, thereabouts. Okay, so it's brand new, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Burton, since 1986. And, and it's slowly but surely coming to a, a conclusion as the Concord, an, And Sudbury. Now, over time, you can see that in the beginning, in 2006, 100% uh, of our funding was matched by the state. But as new uh, towns across the, the, um, the, the state have taken advantage, and you can see CPA state match funds over time, uh, you can see that that number decreased and decreased and decreased. Uh, 67 a drop, then to 35, then to 27. You're all good readers, you can see that. Um, about a 35% is estimated uh, for this coming year on, and, and various funding constraints may keep that from being quite as robust. Thank you. We'll have to see. Last year, we got a nice boost uh, that we were not expecting. CPC application review process, public information meetings have are, are, have already taken place or are taking place, not on August 16th, but this evening. The application deadline, despite our going a week late, 
remains September 16th, 2022. That has been broadly advertised across the town in various websites. And most people seeking uh, funds are aware of that particular deadline. Uh, the, CC, uh, the CPC group business site, this is an experience committee, so we all know what this means will take place on Saturday, September 24th, when we have a chance to physically view uh, the, the, the places where these applications are being presented. We then have application interviews in September, October, and November, and more if we need them. Uh, so we're all aware that Tuesday evenings for uh, these busy months um, sometimes um, are more than what is just scheduled here. There's a public hearing in November in which uh, the, uh, the, the, our work is reviewed. And then on December 6th, we vote to make recommendations to the select board and therefore for the warrant, uh, which goes to the town uh, to be approved. Thank you. Are there any questions that people have? Because this committee is so experienced, I'm not surprised. <laughs> no, um, I don't, not, oh, okay. Oh, uh, yes, Beth, you have a question. Well, you, hi. Good evening. Um, on the application, the applicant. So I'm part of the Civil War Monument Task Force mm -hmm. and we are going to be submitting it. Is that who the applicant is then? Um, Anne, where are you? Are you still with us? I presume, Anne, you want to answer that? I believe the applicant would need to be the town. So you would need to partner with the town um, uh, department. And Beth, one of the things we learned by reading Stuart Saganor's most recent um, uh, missive is that private uh, efforts uh, that are purely private and for the advantage of private use are not applicable for, for CPC funds. But where there is a program like the like the, the monument, the Civil War monument, that's a collaborative effort between the town and either the committee or the individuals who are doing this. So thank you for your work in that. Just a, a clarification on that, but but private applicants are allowed to apply as long as the, the project is for public benefit. For public use. Involves public land. So if that's right. It private applicants for private purposes, but individuals can't apply. It, they'd be wise to liaise with the town department or committee in doing that, but that's permissible. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting, Paul, because in the past, it's been more than wise to liaison with the town. Uh, it's been actually um, imperative because the funding comes from the town, uh, the town coffers, and therefore working with an existing town committee or working with a staff member in town to support and guide all of that has proven to be very important. Have you understood it? That's basically how I've understood. I think uh, when I've asked those questions, I think the question is who's going to manage the project and usually the town department right. manages the project. Uh, it can be brought up by an individual, but it's managed by um, the department. I don't know if that is absolutely essential because uh, if you read the CPC regulations, I think private parties can apply for for um, projects that have public benefit. And then, you know, the management part of that is not clear, but historically in town, it's wise to get sign-ons and support from town departments. That, that's as far as I know that. Um, and especially if it's town property, you would certainly need to partner with a, a town um, department and have the um, the select board's approval. Thank you, thank you, and for that clarification and for that addition. Um, I should say that Paul historically has been very interested in in individual members in in the town uh, seeking out and considering CPC funds, and so he's developed a, a kind of a, a wonderful expertise in that area, Paul. So we're, we're grateful for that. Electrics and expertise, just just the. To finish that we had an application last year there was a private group that put an application for the the uh, improvement of a private uh walkway uh but you know it, it didn't meet the criteria because there was no public access even if it was for public benefit there wasn't easy, easily public access to that asset and, and I, yeah burton 
I was just going to say, maybe Beth, to your question, who the applicant should be, <clears throat> it needs to be the party to whom the the, the funds would would be dispersed, right? So if you have a if you have an entity that is sponsoring a project, that is a it, you want that to be the the party that's the applicant, so that they can receive the funds, they can issue the invoices and and, and the like. You don't have an entity, right? Uh, because there isn't one. Then you should be thinking about well, who would that entity be? Is that should should we be partnering with a town uh, it, uh, department? Because otherwise, you can't just have a check written out to um, a proposal. It needs to be going to somebody that can cash a check. I think the distinction is important too, uh, Diane. About nonprofits um, are yes. certainly separate and different and can in, apply in their own name. So I, I don't know the Civil War Monument Group is part of a nonprofit, or is it uh, right now a kind of group of citizens wanting to move this forward? We were appointed by the select board, so we're a committee. It's yeah. probably the town then. Yes. Yeah. John, thank you for that. And, and just similarly, I know Melissa asked her hand, but similarly last year, the White Pond Advisory Committee submitted an application. It, it wasn't funded, not because they weren't eligible, but for other reasons. The town decided to fund that independent of the, of the CPC. But, but that committee was, was a viable applicant, yeah. And sometimes the requests that come to us require town, um, commit, town departments to be engaged. And therefore, that they have to be able to put that in their budget in terms of time and moving forward. So it's a kind of a collaborative effort in that sense, Beth. Okay. And you know, we're we're here for questions whenever. Uh, so don't don't hesitate to reach out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Melissa. Sawfield, good morning. Good evening. Uh, good evening. So I was just gonna say that in the past some years, I have applied twice. Um, one for restoring the flagpole at um, Emerson Field and the other was Memories of Antietam, the painting that hangs in, this, in the uh, uh, hearing room. Uh, in both cases, I knew it was a town project. And I had the, you know, and I think it was Chris Whale in the first instance and um, might have been Chris in the last, but at any rate, it's so clear. Clear. Thank you. you know, I did this on behalf of the town. I was a private citizen. Um, and, and in Beth's case, it's clearly a town project. So Carrie LaFleur, would sign it. That's what I would, my little three cents. Okay. Linda, you're here, Escobedo. Does that, does that, you, you're the select board that, um, that <clears throat> forwarded this particular, um, this, this particular endeavor. I know Henry Dane has been much involved. Um, Linda, do you think Carrie would be the, 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 the signee or, would, or is it somebody from the select board? So I, I think it's appropriate to start with Carrie, and then um, if it needs to go somewhere else, she'll. Is it our is it our Wi-Fi or is it everybody else's? That it's hard to see here, Linda. No, I can hear. Okay, then. Okay. Okay, Linda, Linda can you say this again, please? I'm going to move. Sure. To a different part <laughs> of the house to see if I can. You know, the select, board, the select board's um, thrilled that the uh, committee has taken this task on, um, but I think it's appropriate to go to Carrie, and then if it needs to be delegated somewhere else, it can be. Terrific. Thanks for that clarification. Yeah. So, have we completely confused you, Beth, or are you, <laughs> are you all set? <laughs> we'll be fine. We're good. We're good. All right. I'm going to lower my hand. Okay. Thank you. I um, Melissa, did you have another question? Uh, I don't think so. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. I raised, I lowered my hand. I was a little late on that. Sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to make sure I'm, I'm getting my agenda. Sorry. <laughs> just a wee bit of time up here. I am, though. Because Wi Fi in New Hampshire is not always perfect. Um, we have some pre pre um, preservation plan updates, and I think um, Anne is going to move us through that. There are other people on this call. Do they have questions? Stefan, Evan, Mark, do you have any questions that you wish we would address or consider before we go forward? 
Okay, seeing seeing no hands raised, here is here is Anne. Okay. Okay. So bear with me as I try to get this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, great. And for those who brought your magnifying glasses, <laughs> time to use them. <laughs> okay. Right. So um, there are about fifty open projects right now. And um, my predecessor, Heather Gill, had prepared this chart. Um, I've been, um, she, had, she had indicated that there were certain projects that could be closed out, um, about 15 of them. So I've been going through those projects uh, very carefully um, since I am new to this whole um, town, <laughs> as well as the projects, as well as the CPC and all of your procedures. So I've been um, moving slowly and cautiously um, through the projects to be sure that they actually can be closed out and they've met all of the criteria uh, that they said that they would and that the CPC had asked for. Um, so I've also been working on um, uh, learning the, the, the financial system of the city and making sure that the numbers here align with um, the admins of, uh, records you know, in, in the financial department. Um, and thirdly, I've been um, updating our annual report with the with the um, the statewide community preservation coalition. Um, that that um, annual report is due in mid September as well, um, and um, they don't release the funds unless that report is done. So that is that that has taken um, my you know my top priority. Um, so that that's just about done. And I did see that the financial director had submitted her report um, today. I think there's one other side. Um, so there are three reports and two of them are, are nearly done. Okay. Um, there's a lot of information in this chart. I hope that the members of our committee will take some time um, before our next meeting to just go over these. And if there are any that you feel or believe should or could be closed out, are about which you have questions. I hope you will take the time to review this carefully um, so that we can we can speak to that at our next meeting. Uh, if you have questions, I'm sure Anne, who's remarkable, uh, would be more than happy to have you come by um, and discuss them with her. Okay. And um, Diane, I, yes, I, I, Paul. I have a question. It's for Anne and maybe for the whole committee. What is the leading indicator that a that a project is eligible for closeout. Is it that it was dormant? It spent all its money? Does the project applicant say it's done? What is the trigger? How, how do we know when a project's ready? Right, it's typically that the applicant says that the project is done and, and clearly that the money is spent. Although sometimes they don't need the entire amount. And then in that case, the remaining funds can go back into the pool um, for, for the new year. Um, but yes, and then there are some other projects that have sort of lingered. And so I do tend to, I have been reaching out to um, folks as well to see um, whether, you know, how they feel about their project and whether um, it was something that they just missed or it, um, it can be closed out. So it's kind of a mix. Well, there are several think, here that, oh, go ahead, Bert. Oh, just to, oh just yeah. To, I'm sorry, just go to ahead, finish. The, I'm sorry. The, the, that that uh, question of um, unexpended funds, I think, is important uh, is, um, because, as you know, we kind of spent all of our contingency last year. And if there are unexpended funds that are not needed for the projects, it'd be nice to get them back into the into the, uh, the budget. Into the coffer. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you could go down to the fourth slide in that in that group, I believe it's the fourth slide. I'd be grateful. Um, and I'll, and if, if other questions don't take us someplace else, if we could keep that one up. Nope, next one, fifth slide. Um, no, I was wrong, fourth slide was right. <laughs> okay. uh, and Nancy Nelson and then Burton. Um, I just wonder, in the past we've seen status reports and all of these projects seem to say yes for status reports. And I'm wondering, um, certainly I don't know a lot, or anything about many of these projects, but some I do, and it, it would be interesting to be able to access those. And I don't know where where to find them. 
okay. I didn't realize that the status reports um, were are meant to be shared. And so I can go through all of the files and scan the status reports oh. and upload them onto the website. That would be terrific because okay. um, I look at something like, for instance, and I want to get to Philip and, and uh, to Charles, I mean, and, and to Burton. I look at the Ride Out Improvement Project. Um, I mean, that was started in 2017. I don't believe um, that there's any more um, th that there's any more funding necessarily required. It says it's in progress, but there's it's twenty thousand dollars, or roughly twenty thousand yeah, dollars. Exactly. It would be really nice to have that twenty thousand dollars for us to be able to use this time around. And there's several on this list that that um, that, that caused me to wonder. Um, uh, like for instance, the the white pond restoration. Uh, so much of that has been already done. One hundred sixty-six thousand dollars was uh, <coughs> was offered. Only twenty-seven thousand, or twenty-eight thousand, roughly, um, has been spent. I'd love to know what's going on there. Um, so, I mean, all of those, um, each one of these projects, we we will. It would be lovely to have some status reports so that we can figure out, you know, what kind of resources we have in the future. Burton. Oh, I was just going to say, and, and Anne, um, please, please ignore anything Elizabeth Hughes may have said about me. Um, but <laughs> don't, 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 no, um, me too. I, I was just going to say administratively, um, it I, I would be great um, t it, when we're receiving, when we're going to be reviewing documents like this or um, other other similar documents that they just be included in the in the invite for the meeting to, to take a look at. Now, the, the status reports themselves, because I can appreciate there may be 30 of them or something for a given meeting, not that, but it would be, I, I know I often have about 30 minutes of prepping for these meetings and it's great if I can pop into a into an email and look at them just just for logistics at, or, or requests since I know you're sort of coming in here and trying to figure out how we operate. But. Thank you. I was going to make the same suggestion because now we have to wait to look at this <laughs> really in detail until our next meeting. And and you and I can meet when we get back to Concord, which will be fun too soon. Uh, <laughs> we're up here for a millennia, but we're not. So um, uh, what you and I can meet and go over some of these and figure out which ones seem you know, most, most bring a kind of an imperative. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Awesome. And, and um, just so you know that these, this chart was posted up on the website under yep. documents, but if it's, it's more convenient to include an email, I can do that as well. Okay. I did not see it there and I, I'm, I've been having trouble trying to find them on that site. The chart, the chart or the status reports, the chart, the, the chart, the chart, the chart is on the, the chart website, is but there. not the status report reports. Okay. You are okay. more accurate with this than I, uh, yeah. you're saying you saw it, right? I, I saw it, but, the, but it was under the date of June 16th. So that might've confused people. Oh, there you go, because I looked and, okay, thank you. That makes me feel much less dim. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll often see our agendas and other committee agendas under something like October 25th, 1910, or whatever it is. It's, it's the wrong <laughs> date. <laughs> so I don't know. It seems really, really hard to change that. So, so I just go top to bottom. <laughs> it's just... well, uh, Tina Brown in a tactless moment. Uh, described uh, Princess Diana as being a bit of a dim light bulb. And that's <laughs> kind of how I feel when I try to go to the website, but I'm getting better slowly but surely. Charles. Just um, um, a, a, maybe a typo, but in one of the projects that's supposed to be closed, Concord Housing Development Corporation, uh, 1888 Main Scroll Street. down. There is no, there is no one eight. Scroll down, please. There is no one eight 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 Main Street. That 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 address doesn't exist. That would be interesting. How much do we get? There must to be a typo. Yeah. No. Do you see that, Anne? I don't see it. Wh which project, Charles? By description. Uh, by description. Uh, well, it says broadening affordable housing, 930 and 1888 Main Street. Could that possibly yeah. be the, uh, to the bottom? One, two, there are three projects involved. Uh, 
It's well, not on this screen. I don't. Charles, do you mean do you mean the documents that are posted to the website, or do you mean on this sheet here? Uh, on on the on the sheet that you, that you sent us as part of the agenda. Sheet. Review of project accounts to be closed. Oh, right, right. Oh, on on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. The so review that's of the projects to be closed. That's so a there's different. probably a typo there. And but there yeah. were three specific ones listed. Yes. Are we so, are we are we closing not, those today? We're not, we're not there yet. So when we get to it, oh, okay. Clarify. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Thirteen. Um, Should I clarify? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. I um I noticed that as well. Um, when I looked it up on the town GIS, I didn't find that address. <laughs> but it, but it's a development. So the deed is actually under that address, but the development itself has a new street name, and I put that into the um into the report so that it they would be clear. So um that was an old address, but it's changed since a new street was introduced on that lot. Ah, thank you, Anne, for that clarification. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. What, what was the address? Um, if you give me a minute, let me see. It was... <clears throat> it's now Ingham Lane, I-N-G-H-A-M. Ingham Lane. Ingham Lane. It, it's on the screen here. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't realize that was CPC funded project. Pardon? Yeah. Okay. And the unit in there. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was in 2014. So yeah. if you weren't on the committee then, and I know I wasn't, I mean, we, those are things we sometimes miss, don't we? Yeah. Even if we're very attentive citizens. <laughs> so, Charles, do you have another question? No, that, that's it. Thank you so much, Paul. Yeah, you know, not, notwithstanding the existence of these status reports of various levels of detail, I, I'm wondering if it would be appropriate to, to uh, try to shoehorn something into a standing agenda where we might pick out a couple of projects that we're unfamiliar with and, and ask for a brief update. You know, we spend a lot of time with new applications, which I think is really, that's our main job. But I, I think to become a little bit familiar with some more of these projects, the bigger ones, the ones that have been going on for a while and not complete. It, and I'm just suggesting we don't have to decide today, but you know, the, the idea of putting in a couple of project reviews and a standing agenda and asking the applicant to spend five minutes giving us an update. Um, the, I, I think that would help the committee understand. That's a great we're, idea. We're that's, a wonderful, that's a wonderful idea, Paul. And we might pick one from each of the areas, historic preservation, recreation, you know, and just go around and you know, open land. I mean, do that, do and, and housing, we might do that so that we could pick one, you know, four. And perhaps would, would your advice, Paul, be to go to the older ones or a, a, add Sarah, kind of a random shot across the bow? High dollar amount. <laughs> if I, if I can make a suggestion. High dollar. <laughs> As a first one, I'd like to know more about what's going on with the funding for assisted living. In West Concord, that's received a million dollars from this committee. That's right, and it's coming back for more funding from the town. And that's uh, that is the Junction Village Assisted yeah. Living. Um, yeah. and I think, I think it would be good. Even more there. than a million dollars, Burton. I think we actually got up to to two million and change. Yeah. Um, okay. So it, it's been a, a it it is it continues to be a a problem a, a concern. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be a concern on, for all sorts of reasons. And the various Concord housing programs are addressing it vigorously. I've been to at least six meetings this summer um, from with Concord housing authorities discussing what they're going to do if we fall below the 10% when the new census comes out in, I think, next April um, or May. And, and we will fall below the 10%, it, we think, um, even if we, you know, even if we count everything, we're still probably going to fall below 10%. So then one looks at this and says, well, is this a moral imperative that it's not just we don't want a 40B. Uh, and for those who aren't familiar with 40Bs, that means somebody just being able to come in because we're below 10% and make an, an, a, an advantageous development um, that is ungoverned by the town in any way, uh, except that, you know, the normal constraints. Uh, or do we or do we address this on a moral level? 
that we should have at least 10 percent of our housing you know in a in an affordable housing so you know whichever way one comes at that it, it's it's a big discussion in the town right now yeah burton if I can just add to that for people's awareness, if they didn't know, um, the, the state recently passed, passed a climate law, which allows communities, uh, a select group of 10 uh, sort of pilot communities to prohibit uh, construction with new fossil fuel hookups, which has been something that uh, the town has been trying to do. In fact, passed a home rule petition to do that mm -hmm. at town meeting. Uh, and I can say as a past chair of the planning board, is uh, we hear that all the time. Why aren't you doing more to pre prohibit fossil fuel hookups? And the reason is because this, we have to live within the state building code. And, and, and so we, we can't override that. And, and the town of Brooklyn tried and was, was lost in court. The town of Concord has, has said through a home rule petition, we'd like to do that. And the new climate law says the town can do it if it's selected as part of the communities, if it meets the 10% affordability requirement is calculated under 40B. Which is, is gives us, you know, you talk about the moral reason or the, the the legalistic reason. Going forward, we now have two very compelling reasons to consider where we send our CPC funds. Uh, pre previously, for for better or for worse, you may have had two reasons to support affordable housing projects. One of which being because it's a public good. One of it, which is because you don't want to see a large project in your neighborhood. The third is now to enable the town to be able to. Um, prohibit new fossil fuel hookups, just for people's awareness, whether or not you think that's a good thing. You know, Diane, you. This, this is exactly the type of discussion that stems from a, a project review. And I think it, it adds richness, I think, to our to our understanding of these projects. So, I mean, I, I think we should take a look at, I, I don't want to preempt this rich discussion, but I think we should take a look at the list that Anne provides here to maybe you know, suggest a, a, a mini slate for the next few meetings. Yeah, I don't know how to go about it implementing that but I think okay there are a lot well of let me that, that, let me yeah. ask if if somebody in on the committee would like to pick those first four whether you'd like ann and myself to pick the first four or whether um uh, uh I, I don't think we can do this by by saying okay who wants one <laughs> but you know after you after you've read them if you want to send some suggestions to me or if you want to um uh in, in fact delegate this to paul whose very good idea has motivated this. Um, what are people's general impressions and how do you think we should proceed? Don't all speak at once. I'm sure. sure. What I, do you think? I like the idea that I think Sarah yelled out, let's look at the big ones. Okay. <laughs> I got it wrong. If I got your name wrong, if that was Sarah, but I, I say look at the big dollar ones. I think some mix of old, old and big. Yeah. Old and big. Yeah, yeah. I go right. for the big ones. That's okay. what I was thinking. Ann and I will look at the old and big and bring four suggestions to you in okay. advance of that meeting. And if there's no reason to, to, to not go forward, that'll be on our next agenda. Okay? Right. Thank you. Thank you for the good collaborative work on the committee. Fantastical. Okay, now uh, we go on to, um, and, and Ann, is this has this given you the support you need for item number two, community preservation plan updates? Oh, I, I think that that's what this chart really is, is the, um, you know. Good. These 50 <laughs> updates on 50 projects. Okay, yes. Nancy and then Paul. I had a couple of uh, uh, things to note on, on the updates. Okay, terrific. Um, on page 21, uh, they're talking about uh, improving collaboration and management and no, wait, no, no, going down to the Concord's open space plan 2015 and then one through one through nine areas. I would um, just say that, you know, some places it's noted uh, what entities or what areas and when it comes to the Virginia Roadwoods, um, I think there may be they may be thinking about national park lands. I never, I never saw a reference, but I haven't read everything perfectly to the national park, and certainly in open space, that's a big thing. So on page twenty-two, also um, under agricultural land, Lexington Road is indicated. Um, most of that is national park. So I think those things should be added. And uh, same thing might go and with- those things, um, When you say those things should be added, what do you mean, Nancy? 
Um, under agriculture, um, I'm sorry, under agricultural lands, um, number, number two, Lexington Road, that's mostly national park. And some places the wildlife refuge is noted or other entities are noted. And I think there's kind of an oversight of what's, what, what resources are associated with um, national I'm wondering park. if, Anne, could you put up the plan so we can see what- I'm sorry? Is? Could you put ask, up, yeah. Anne, if you could put up, put up the plan, the CPC plan, because you're referring to specific- about. Oh, you're pages. talking to Anne. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I I had thought we would be going through it page by page, but oh, that's a very long document. John, that would be fantastic if all of us knew how to access it. Um, as everybody, well, you asked us all to read it before this meeting. We should. I, I asked you, ask you all to read the the um. Well, then I stand corrected, John. Am I the only one that did not read it? And did not find it. Well, I went to the office and got a printed copy and went through it page by page. But it's, 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 it's on, the, on, on the meeting. The current, meeting, the current right? meeting documents. Yeah. Was posted. The, the plan is posted with the edits. And so. Okay, Sarah, you've read it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused about what we're talking about now. Are we talking about the three updates? Griffin and um, presented just a minute ago on the screen. Oh, I had to look at it. Yes, but I, I didn't go through in the detail that we need to to um, Wait, make comments. Think, okay, and I'm sorry. I, I think I confused people too because yeah. I was yeah. confused myself. <laughs> um, so there was the spreadsheet of updates, but but now we've switched over to the community preservation plan. Oh, and, plan. The, um, the document. That's correct. So all of these. Well, we had switched when Nancy started on it. Oh, right. okay. I thought you were talking about yeah. the um the report the three reports to close. Okay. Can you put that, can you put that up on the screen, <laughs> Anne, please? The three, the three reports I, am, I, am, I think mentioned going back or somebody mentioned going back to number item number two on the agenda, which was the um, community preservation plan updates. I, I thought that's what we were just discussing just now. No. No, this is it. No. Yeah. There we go. So can you all see this now? Okay. And okay, the, I did not read this. Just that we've edited this, I think, two different times. So this is the latest round of edits that's, that's on here. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen. Oh, okay. Of these yeah. Before actually, but they're particularly. Um, the, the the colored sections, on uh, colored lines. I don't know if it's green right, or whatever. So um, those yeah. are the new the new parts. But then I thought we were to read it again and make additional suggestions such as Nancy was doing. Right. That's what I thought. Okay. And there are some, I mean, there's, um, for instance, on page 22, um, the reference, they're talking about conservation protection areas. And the last, the last sentence says, the Barrett's Farm Field and Willow Guzzle are potential projects in this category. Well, the Barrett's Farm area is now um, NRC, town-owned NRC, and National Park. Willow Gussell, I don't know. <laughs> so that's that's important, I think, to note that that's, that's accomplished. But anyway, we could defer this, I suppose. I have a number of suggestions on different pages as well from the going through it page by page. Yeah. John, it is this document, just for clarification, and I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused. It is this document that you wish to go through page by page? Or the document? Uh, I thought that was, I thought that's what you asked us to do at the last meeting. I did, to... I, but I, I was referring to the chart with all of the potential. Mm -hmm. That was what I was asking us to prepare for next the next meeting. D does that okay, not? I, then perhaps I misunderstood. I thought you wanted us to take the Community Preservation Act Conquered plan. Yes, and I go through it. I've done this. I've read this one through. Well, but that's that's what's on the agenda, actually. So, yeah, I, I agree. On the agenda is the final review of this plan, and and I think we should provide comments to. Well, I'm. Ha I think that's terrific. I then, <clears throat> what what was the document that we reviewed about those updates and status reports? 
They were just project, project updates, not uh, those project updates. Updates. Uh, not uh, updates. Yes, but accounts to be closed in project updates. So you're saying that's number three, not number two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and, and I missed the last meeting, so I'm sorry I didn't get the memo to review this. Okay, well, Dim, Dim Bulb here missed all this. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have read this, so let's go through it. We could do it next next meeting and people will be more prepared. I, I, I would absolutely defer to the um, considerations of the committee. What do you all think? Well, I think if several of us have comments now, we ought to put them on here. Because I couldn't agree more, Paul. We could extend it to the next meeting as well. Not and if people it. who have not had a chance to review it or didn't yeah. understand that they should can go back and do so, uh, they can then um, add, we can always have this as a continuing or sustained dialogue. Is that all right with everyone? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Is that okay? All right. So, Paul, why don't you start? And then John has some comments and, and we'll okay, go I, I, and Nancy, I, just have, I just have a few things. Okay. Uh, page, page 25, I'll, I'll just hit. If you go to page 25, I have three, three comments. Um, so on page 25, you mentioned, uh, blah, 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 blah. 25. 928, pretty quick. Yep. There we go. Okay, okay. Um, down at the bottom, you say, uh, Recreation Commission completed the town's first recreation facilities plan in 2014, blah, blah, blah. I think you should add, that that plan is being updated um, and CPC has funded the update of this plan because in this paragraph we said this plan is is a template for C, CPC funding yeah. a new template is being provided so that, yeah. my comment is to update this first paragraph mm -hmm. um, second and one, I think we ha I believe we have to speak of that Paul unless I misunderstand I believe we have to speak of that as ongoing yeah oh absolutely yeah, and it's expected that has not been consummated. And it was and we, 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 last we, last year. We could say that plan is expected in mid 2023, but just that would be lovely. Okay. Yeah. Um, on page 47, there we've had discussion about completion of projects in 30, 30 months. Um, and it's again it's repeated on page 47 um, somewhere. Oh yeah, we'll project completion. Um, yeah, wherever possible project should be completed um, in 30 months. Um, and then, you know, I, I took a look at the application on the timeline and, and the timelines on the applications are sometimes pretty specific and sometimes non-existent. So I think we somehow we need to tidy this up a little bit and say wherever possible projects should be completed within 30 months. And, and, and the application should detail uh, and either the status report should say why that's not happening or or the timeline should be more specific. It's just, I think the timing, it involves this paragraph here and also later on the application on the timelines. I looked at the applications for last year and some of them had timelines so and didn't say anything. That's right. So it, it's, um, I, I, if we're going to be serious about, they should be completed within 30 months and unless, um, I wouldn't say permission is granted, but unless explanations are given or something like that, just to tidy I think this that's, up. I think that's really important, Paul. When you look back at the number of projects that are not completed, where there's residual funds bouncing about, um, it's way beyond 30 months. I mean, yeah, and, and <laughs> there's money, beyond, there's 30 30 months. beyond 30 months. And it's, um, I, I don't know this for a fact, but it appeared to be quite a bit of money. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes, and long term and way long beyond, time. way, way beyond. Um, Doesn't this say somewhere else in this document that um, it says whenever possible, but isn't there something somewhere else that says you have to provide an explanation to CPC? It, and, it does, and I believe it's yeah. early on um, in which that is stated. But it doesn't hurt to have it in there again. That's why I couldn't agree more. It, it just, so we ought to look at this whole timing issue because it's a little bit fuzzy uh, yeah. on here. And um, so, Paul, are you, think, are you recommending that we uh, we can't add to the application necessarily right now, but we can add to our query when we meet with various um, applicants to make certain that we gain at least a verbal uh, understanding of what their timeline is. And record that as part of our understanding of how they're going forward. Is that what you would recommend? Well, the timeline is in 
the application. I think we should be serious about that. Well, I it is, but it's not. As you suggested, there are plenty of applicants that didn't. Well, I mean, that's that's a problem with these ongoing projects. But I'd say to, to help that issue right here, we should say they should be completed. If not completed, then um, the project applicants should make the CPC aware of the reasons for that or something like that. Okay. We, need, we, need, we can't just leave this hanging out there. No. I think the application process, as far as I remember, is fine. Um, but not every applicant takes that seriously. So, Well, it's up to us then to make certain that we yeah. pay attention to that as we move through. Thank you, Paul, for And, and, and just the, the, last, the last comment, um, and nowhere in the application process or in the criteria um, is a discussion of, I'll call them dependencies or contingencies. In, in our discussion of the um, of the West Concord um, open space project, remember we basically said ultimately it's contingent on uh, Christopher Heights being built, right? Yes, that, and that was not clear in the application, and we kind of backed in as far as I can tell. I kind of backed into that. So uh, somewhere in here, I think we should encourage the applicant to state explicitly dependencies or contingencies. You know, so. Um, we, I, we, know, we know about that. I, I can only speak for myself, but in converse, many conversations with them, uh, they understood that it was only if the Christopher Heights bulldozer <laughs> hit the ground and started. Otherwise, they know they can't proceed. No, the, the, it, it just wasn't in the application. So, yeah. I, you know, um, so, yeah. so but in subsequent us, conversations, they, they made that quite clear. Yeah. So just um, after I, I all know. their work, let us hope that <laughs> it is not to not, but. And, and, you know, for, for example, some of the rail trail funding, remember, it was contingent upon the state providing something. Now, in that case, uh, Marshall withdrew part of that application because it, it didn't come up. Didn't come, come to about, but I, but I think that could happen again. Mm -hmm. That's, these, are, these are wise and helpful comments. Uh, Sarah, did you have one you wanted to add? Or, or Nancy, did you? Um, I had those couple on page. Um, 21, it's um, under the category of open space. Um, and they're talking about the open space and recreation plan and identifying areas for natural vegetation dominating the landscape and agricultural areas. Yes. And they designate um, several areas for natural. And um, I think when you're on Virginia Road looking at woods, they're I'd like to look at it more carefully, but there may be national park land back there. But on page 22, especially under agriculture, uh, Lexington Road, um, the agricultural part of Lexington Road is almost entirely national park. Right? That is, that's really in, important um, to indicate, particularly given the grant that I believe, and you can help me with this, Nancy. Yeah. The yeah. grant that the national parks have recently received, which in part is to address um, the, the land. <laughs> yeah. and, and but the isn't isn't Haywood Meadow? Would Haywood Meadow come under this or not? Maybe I'm just getting confused. It's not agricultural land per se. No, I guess it's not. No, okay. It's more in your bailiwick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Resources. <laughs> um, and then also there's Lexington Rubs, primarily National Park. And then number five, reformatory farms. I'm a little unclear about that, but on Barrett's Mill Road, um, National Park um, for Agriculture, National Park, and especially the town NRC with Barrett's Mill Farm there. Um, that's, a, that's a major part of the agricultural character of the Barrett's Mill Road area. So that's that. And then uh, we should update uh, yes, under- Are the reformatory farms not the farms that the prison uses? I don't know. So I wasn't talking- They're wasn't not. Address, okay. I don't know, I wasn't addressing that. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about number five, reformatory farms, Barrett's Mill Road. It's the slash Barrett's Mill Road part, but I think the reformatory is further past Barrett's Mill, and they have the cattle there. You know, they have those big herds of cattle oh, yeah. there. They do, but Barrett's oh. Mill Road actually kind of dovetails. I mean, I don't know where in the, in the, in the circle <laughs> it 
no longer is, is Barrett's Mill Road, but I mean, when it becomes officially Route 2, but I, 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 no, I understand I that. That's, I think that's what they're talking about. The, I do too. That's what I think, yeah. Okay. And then the last thing would be under open space opportunities, number two, they're, they talk about um, the Barrett's Farm Field area yeah. as being an opportunity. And basically, that's pretty well done. So um, that was, I think that's all I had. Um, and by, by saying that it's basically done, could you be more vague, as my mother used to say? <laughs> well, they're oh. talking about it as an opportunity, and it really is no longer an opportunity because the land's protected um, by NRC and it's farmed by Barrett's Mill Farm folks. Yep. So it's kind of done. Wouldn't you agree, Sarah? I mean, it's it's pretty much done. The National Park Barrett's Mill Farm is pretty well. Prepared. You would you would eliminate the the the, the Barrett's Mill Farm field and just go to Willow Guzzle or potential. Yeah, I might just take out. That, that's the easiest. Yeah, part, just take yeah, that okay. out. Terrific. We can just take out that 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 beginning of that sentence. Thank you. Yep, yeah, that's all. And then private and unprotected farmland. Um, um, no, nothing there. Sorry, that's all I have. Thank you so much. John. Uh, well, let me just, I'll try to run through them um, quickly because I'm not sure what the best approach is to, I'll raise them and then if uh, you want them sent in in some format, I'll try to do that. Um, yep. I did think I did think we were going through it page by page, um, but we're, we're jumping around. So I'll just go where I made my first notes. Okay, I, did, um, pick, I, I didn't understand that expectation, John, or I would have set that up, so I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, anyway, page 14. Um, this is in the housing uh, area. Let's see, page 12. No, I say I got to get try to get this straight. Page 13. Page 13 ends with criteria for community housing projects. Um, and there are nine. I it it all stems really from the Keith Bergman um, letter um, about Christopher the Heights. Select board. I'm sorry. To the select board, you mean? Well, he wrote to the select board, but you sent it to all of us. I know, but I'm just. Um, yeah, and anyway, um, it's a question, of, and it, it's an issue that he brought to our committee when back when I was chair. And so it, it, the question is whether we should add a number 10 at the bottom of page 14 that says working with the affordable uh, housing trust um, in terms of criteria for community housing projects. I mean, there's always going to be this issue of collaboration with them because they are a separate source of community housing money. And obviously their letter it seemed yeah. to me that was almost asking whether we were going to speak up on this issue. It was, um, John, and I I think your comment is is well is well received. I also think that they're not just partners in money; they're partners in understanding and resources and information. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we called on them last year, um, Keith and others, to come and talk with us um, about some of our thoughts about the Estabit River Bluff project. So, um, if we could make if we could add and. Uh, a number ten. That I think that is a wise, uh, uh, a wise contribution. Thank you, John. Yep. Okay. Then moving on. Um, where am I going to next? Um, yeah. This John, is. May I, in... one, may I ask one question? If we think of this as a as a working document and one that will be used by other, you know, by this committee, <laughs> when all of us uh, are not on it. Um, or each of us is not on it. Uh, in, in working with the CH, uh, the, the Concord Housing Development Corporation and, and the trust, uh, is, is it your sensibility that that would in any way prejudice or bias this committee's work? Mm -hmm. I just want to- I, well, I think they, they have, oh, I'm sorry, were, were you asking me? I was because you're the the lawyer and the judge. I mean, what do you think? <laughs> I think it's not because okay. I think they have consistently asked uh, that we uh, collaborate. We've never worked out anything rather more formally. We have no uh, no memorandum of understanding with them, but right. they certainly do do the same work we do. And I think it's important to acknowledge mm -hmm. uh, with a with a, a gentle word like collaboration. Yes. Um, 
um, relate, uh, you know, to, continue to our relationship. Okay, then collaborate, um, collaborate where when appropriate. Da 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think that that keeps a, an open door. Thank you. Okay, moving on to page 19. These are the criterion for historic preservation projects. And I know Diane, you along with my wife are in the thick of the 250th planning. Um, I wondered if number 10 there at the bottom of page 19 should be um, projects relevant to the 250th celebration. That's interesting. Well, they, I, I had These are criteria. This again, it's general criteria but mm -hmm. this is going to be the biggest event in town uh, for all of us. Well, I hadn't thought of adding it to our to our charge or our understanding, but I, I don't think it's imprudent. What are other people's responses to that? It's very specific and mm -hmm. and we may not we may not get the massive influx of people that we are hoping for. So it is there something more general we could? So or we may get a massive influx. <laughs> oh, I think well, we, everybody's I think we will. hoping, but you know, the country's kind of not not celebratory. You know? Anyway, so I just think it's very specific, um, mm. and maybe there's something broader. Um, I'm trying to read these again. Do any of the other ones cover? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Something like that. Please, could you scroll down a bit? Thank and, you. And then we'll, Let's supplement, provide, help, include, consider projects um, relevant. Well, number to two, team. I mean, number two kind of. And number three. Is relevant. Yeah, and number three. So I, I don't think we need a specific one for one year. I think these cover it. Yeah, I think, I think that would be good to just, I, I think with all these taken together, especially, mm -hmm. but the um, two and three may be most particularly. When I was reading through this, I was thinking about at this moment the the right tavern um, and its prominence um, in the whole Rev two fifty, really Rev twenty four actually, um, and then going forward. And it struck me that the language was sufficient here for any support or additional support that may be necessary or maybe advantageous or you know. Um, so. Um, well, I, I just, again, I'd suggest as a compromise, something in two or three that recognizes that event is something like including. I, that's, um, great. that's great. Such as, such as. Such as or including uh, yes. um, projects, projects uh, relevant to the 250th. But um, that'll be obsolete pretty soon. Yeah, but taking, take, uh, with, uh, taking into account the Rev 250 celebration yeah taking into account the needs does that word does that language work for everybody taking into account the needs potential needs yeah and then you don't leave other things out but i don't care that much on this one no, what diane whatever you are comfortable with you're very involved with this well, I, I'm just trying to be supportive of your comments. So, taking into account um, uh, the, the, the 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 potential needs of the of the uh, Rev 250 celebration, does that does that language work for everybody? Sure. Okay. Terrific. Okay, John. Moving us forward, John. Uh, right. Moving along. Uh, I think I just have. Oh couple more yeah on uh this is all for our nrc this is in the open space at the bottom of page 24 i just wondered if number seven would make any sense to add trail maintenance and safety we've that certainly been one of the ways we that was one of the reasons we supported the uh the uh, rifle range grant uh some some years ago well, that is the reason we did, isn't it? And then we did the same, yeah. thing, and we did the same thing two years ago uh, for the trail that um, I don't believe is that I don't think it's the same one as the rifle range, but the that the one where um, you could see that anybody trying to walk along could fall off the edge. 
so that's the rifle range. Is that the rifle range? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so at least, just, there's at least one. <laughs> So again, some general language about trail maintenance and safety, trail access maintenance and safety hmm. as a general good goal or good criteria for a project. I have a question about that, uh, John, and I think this is good advice. And Anne, I hope you're able to convert John's good language there in, into a, a possible item number seven. Um, and, and that is that to some degree, that is the town not responsible for that? And are we um, so in so stating, are we saying that as a partner with the town, we in partnership with the town, da 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 da? What do you think, John? I would suspect we're in partnership with the town on the prior six. It, it, I, I don't know that we need a distinction. Okay. All right. How does everybody else feel? I, I'm comfortable. Okay. And do you, could you indicate that you got that, the language there? Or would you like a clarification? Yes, I've got it. Terrific. Thank you. And this one's for Paul, bottom of page 27 on the criterion for, I think these are recreation projects. Uh, whether it's important to indicate uh, working with the organized uh, youth and town sports organizations. Hmm. You mean add, add it on to that, John? Yeah, as a number five. Well, yeah. we did that with the high school fields, didn't we, John? Yeah, it's just another criterion that you would be evaluating a project on its degree of coordination with or relationship to organize um, youth and sports organizations in town. And you don't think uh, does it four cover that? Well, it was only to we've always asked that question of okay. uh, applicants in the past. Have you are you coordinated with our youth groups? Are they contribute? Oh, I see. What I you guess mean. okay. I, I agree with John. I think it's um, so much of the youth sports are are um, conducted by, by sort of private groups for the benefit of the town, and they use town facilities. And so I, I think that the liaison with, with groups, spe specifically mentioning those private groups, um, I think that's important. So it's a little bit vague in number four, I think. Okay. John, could you give us language then again for number five that doesn't exist? <laughs> the Phantom Five. Let me get back there. Um, let's see. We use utilize, ensure, expand, uh, coordinate with, um, consider the interests of. Uh, yeah, I think the interest of it and, and the use of, I, I use the term recreational assets by, by um, town sports groups. Okay. If the town sports group is creating or soliciting funds, a, a sports group is soliciting funds, and they are uh, prepared to make these available for either school use or broader town use. Um, is that not, that's not, I believe that to be an important criteria. Would, would you all agree? As opposed to, I, I can't think of a field that way, but can anybody think of a project where this might be giving money to an organization that does not necessarily is not necessarily open for and uh, and engaged by and appropriate for broad town usage. You know, I, I think the project would have to go through Anna and the Recreation Department. The sports group could propose that, but it, it's sort of like the conversation we had earlier. Who'd be the sponsor? There could be an improvement in the field to improve safety, 
to improve access, uh, to improve usability. Um, you know, those could be proposed, but it would be through through the recreation department. Okay. John, do you, do you have, uh, do, do you want to repeat that? And do you have uh, the language that makes you, do, do you think you have the proper language to move forward on this one? Or would you like clarification? Um, I guess I would like clar clarification since you mentioned town groups, but you also mentioned just general, like other organized groups. Are, are you preferring one over the other or? Or, or both, all, all of the above. John, do you think you could give us that language again, please? Paul was working with me on it. I think it was something to the effect of consider the interests, interests and needs. Yeah, of organized. They're all youth of, sports group, you know. Of youth, of youth, yeah, of, of Concord's youth sports organizations. Yeah, Concord Crowley Youth Baseball, Concord Crowley Youth Soccer. Con you know, yeah. they're all those. The, the Recreation Department doesn't run that, but the Recreation Department provides the playing fields for the use right. by those organizations. So there's, right. a, there's a symbiosis. Between I don't think we can say Concord Carlisle in our thing. We have to say Concord. <laughs> well, that's, I'm just saying that's the name. You can put abbreviation CCYBCCSB. But yeah, I think amazing. consider the interests and needs of Concord youth sports organizations. Thank you. Exactly. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So promulgated by private organizations as well as town. Well, I really like the it'd be almost like the flagpole, except it would be like we need a, a new mm -hmm. a new set of goals. We need a new set of soccer goals, but it would have to be done through the town. Right. Okay. Is everyone comfortable with those recommended changes that, that John has so skillfully recommended? Well, so Anne, will you will you um, update this document in a different color or something so that everyone could, can just check the new changes and then we can read through and see if there's any more for those of us who haven't gone through it carefully? Good idea. Yes, yeah, so I can do that. Thank you, that'd be okay. helpful. Thank you, that's a, a great suggestion and it would be most helpful. Um, I have a question. Um, at some point, we actually have to publish this document as opposed to keep on editing it. And the edits are all good. And I think the, the more we read this, the more changes we make, but we probably should blow the whistle on a, on a, a publication date. Well, I think yes. once, once these emendations have been reviewed by the committee, we can vote to accept it at our next meeting. Exactly. Well, I trust that Ann will send out those, those, those changes. Um, in different color <laughs> and serve as a kind of as if we were reading our minutes for the meeting, we would be reading through this document. Um, and then we can vote on it at our next meeting. Thank you, Paul. Well, and, and realizing there's some in the committee that haven't reviewed this, they need the opportunity to review it and provide the comments offline here. So absolutely. So one, one more final set of comments, we review it, and we declare, we vote on it. So how, how about we agree to, I agree to review in the next two weeks. So any, any new comments go to Anne in the next two weeks and that still gives us two weeks to review before the next meeting. Terrific. And that also gives, um, I mean, each of us should take that. I mean, I've, I've read through them. I presume most of us had a chance to. What I have not read through just for clarification was that four or five page document updated, doc, uh, updated um, status reports. And that's the one I hope we will all review carefully uh, before our next meeting. Okay, review. I had just, could I just make oh. one last uh, comment? Oh, of course. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, page, I, page, well, it's just a question for Anne, and that's whether there's a number of references for how to communicate with the CPC. And I, well, bottom, one example is on the bottom of 31. I just didn't know the comfort level of having her name um, available to the community as a contact, as opposed to just calling the planning division. And I didn't remember if we had Heather's name in this or not in the past as the as a you know as a direct contact for help. Um, I think it's it's safest to have the whole planning division there so that if I 
uh, don't get it that someone else does. Um, you know, I'll, I guess I, I should say that um, in looking at this document, I, I think it could use quite a lot of work, <laughs> um, but I, I have a lot on my plate right now. And so I, I didn't want to get into my suggestions at this point, but maybe a year from now, I would have more suggestions. It's uh, to me, it seems as if it's a plan, an annual report, and a sort of um, uh, sort of process um, manual. <laughs> and so we might consider breaking it apart to three separate documents. Um, but that's just my my two cents. It well, I think it makes yeah. And I think we, it makes a lot a lot of sense. Yeah. We um, look and that's that's that fits with my last comment, which is page forty seven and forty eight the um, working year broken out by months is really, I think, not accurate any longer. Um, and I think when Ann tackles the bigger project of reorganizing this document, I'm sure she'll uh, realize, and I think all of us can see that we don't do the things now that are on that annual schedule. Yeah. A thought that for the on future. Page forty-eight. Page forty-seven and forty-eight. It's a it's a monthly time. It's a generalized monthly timeline, um, but it it just you know we we we've we've changed a lot in our scheduling. Okay. I'll I'll look for that. Then the numbering may be off too. Okay. I'm done. Fantastic. Hands down. Hands down. Thank you for your your careful perusal and study of this. It's it's much appreciated by all of us. Um, review a project accounts to be closed. Now that we've had clarification that there is no one eight 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 Main Street. Um, you want to move us through these, Anne? Yes. Um, so this one was very straightforward. It's the Sleepy Hollow um, roadway and drainage improvements. It was a, a multi-year project and the subsequent, subsequent year had already been approved by the commission and they had just, or the committee in this year had just been omitted. Um, so we've already reviewed this in the past and this is just um, an earlier phase. That's, that's certainly completed as well. And will you update all of them to today's date rather than last Tuesday, since the meeting is today? That makes sense. Oh, yes, I see. Because somewhere, somewhere it says that we reviewed on the 16th, but right. it's now the 23rd. Right. Thank you. I that, that, yeah. On all of them, thanks. Okay. Um. And this, this was another multi-year project um, going back, I guess the application was first submitted back in 2012, um, but these housing projects take quite some time. Um, and I have gone through the file and, and made sure that all of the documentation in was in place. Um, there was just an opening recently for the site, for the um, house at 930. Main Street, and there's the invitation which I sent out to you. Um, so that's all very exciting to see that complete. Um, and I should actually update this photo <laughs> one more time. I, I think I was there the week before the celebration, and there was still a dumpster in front of the building. <laughs> <that's gone. laughs> um, and then the Haywood Meadow was the the third one, the third, right? Um, so that they were just, they had just um, removed some bollards and extended this stone wall here. And so that's all completed. And the documentation for these um, uh, natural resource projects are, are always excellent. So the, the file was fully complete on that. Thank you so much. That is a beautiful stone wall uh, for those of you. Yeah, who are in I Florida. agree. It's wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's a work of art. Mm -hmm. It's just gorgeous. 
Thank you, Anne. Are there any questions about these three projects? From anybody on the committee, anybody in the audience, any questions? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, we'll go forward. Um, or do, do, we, we, do we need to take a vote, vote on that? Or? I guess we have to vote. Do we vote on that? Help everybody. John, do we vote on this? Probably. Probably, okay. Let's okay. I proposal, Sarah. Um, yes, I, I make a motion to approve the three uh, reports, completion reports that we just reviewed with the amendment of the date that we discussed. Thank you. Do I hear a second for that proposal? A second. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, John? You're, you're muted, so just wave or something. Um, yes. Nancy? Aye. Charles? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Paul? Yes. Burton? Yes. Uh, and I am an aye, and I do declare that therefore it has been passed. Thank you very much. Unanimously. Um, the right tavern preservation restriction is no longer really under our aegis. It's under the aegis of the, um, the Concord Housing, um, uh, the, the um, historical, uh, historical. Commission. historic um, uh, commission. But I thought an update was important uh, because we were, we've worked long and hard on this and spent a lot of time on it. And Nancy, you seem to be the most um, um, updated, you and Anne probably together on this. And um, you sit on the Historic uh, Commission, I thought maybe you would be willing to at least let our committee know where we are. I was surprised to learn that this was not CPC business because I think it's specifically called out that CPC should review and approve in the grant agreement. Well, so. we were informed by the, by, <clears throat> Informed by the planning division that it is not our because um, well I you read you read the same note that I got, that that Anne sent you I read that same note Anne can you address this for us Elizabeth Hughes has has suggested that this is not our business right but I'm wondering did she was she aware of the grant language at that time right. I I don't, good point, Nancy. I, I don't think she was aware of the grant language at that time um, that does say that the, the um, CPC would review and approve um, the preservation restriction along with the historical commission. I think the historical commission um, should be the one to review and approve it first. And I would expect this commission to defer to their decision. Um, and they they did invite um, Tom Wilson of the Wright Tavern to their next meeting, um, and he'll be presenting, um, his, you know, an update to his project and you know accept questions from the commission. Um, informally, I should say that I've had an opportunity to talk with both Tom and Peter uh, Nobley, who've been involved in all of this, and part of the. Uh, the question is how often will this be open to the public? And I, I think I, I think it's in, in terms of both intent and intention, it will be open a great deal more than 12 and a half days a year, <laughs> which is some of the legal language that, that is often appended to these. Um, and I hope this can be, um, I hope that whatever issues uh, remain can be uh, clarified and resolved at the earliest possible moment. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of concern about that number of days. Yes, I understand that. And um, from, but, but from speaking directly with those folks, it seems to me that mm -hmm. I hope this is resolved mm -hmm. equitably and, and quickly. So, mm -hmm. um, so thank you, Nancy, for staying on top of this. And thank you, Anne, for um, helping. And Melissa, Melissa's also here. And, oh, Melissa's here. Chair of Historical <laughs> Commission. Yeah. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> She's been terrific. Yes. Oh, yes, I'm here really for just for this. Um, hey. Just speaking on behalf of the Historical Commission, uh, Anne has spoken as Nancy has and, that, and stated what our biggest concern is public access, but we do have an underlying issue and that is what is the ultimate use of the structure? 
And that is the question that we asked. I actually dug back out my letter from <laughs> fall of 2020 when Tom first came before us. Um, and we asked the question at that time and we have still not gotten a, a really inadequate answer. Uh, we are impressed with the professional folks that he's brought on board and have a lot of faith in them. But I do feel uh, the town of Concord has has supported this project with a lot of money and I think they're maybe asking for more. So I just would like to go on record that we still have those two questions, public access and ultimate use. And Melissa, those, those questions could not be more pertinent. These are not frivolous questions, they're essential questions. Um, when, uh, and, and I know that I know that Tom, uh, you know, Wilson uh, was able a week ago Friday to finally cement a working group that he in which he has a great deal of confidence. And I and I hope that then as they go forward, um, that whatever residual concerns um, that we may have can can be addressed effectively. A working uh, a working group. A working group. As of a week ago last Friday, he, um, I, I, we met over something entirely different. Um, and at that meeting, I asked him how this was coming along. And Tom said that he had met that morning with a group of people and he was extremely pleased uh, with a group that is on board now and, and what, their, what their planning is. So I didn't, it, you know, it wasn't my business to go any further than that, Nancy, but it was a very... Yeah. It was an encouraging conversation. Oh, uh, maybe we'll hear something about that. Yeah. The, and when is your next meeting? The historical Commission meeting. When is it? Your next meeting? September 8th. September. Thank September you. 8th. If any of us is free on September 8th, I hope we will think about attending that meeting but because we have been involved in this project as a committee now for many years. And I, I just wish to comment that we've not only been involved in the last two funding years, but well before that on the exterior of the building itself. So we've had many, many iterations, um, I think, in terms of committing, uh, you know, developing uh, this particular project. Windows, roof. Yeah, windows, roof, gutters, sorts of things. things like you know, well before we got to the interior of the building. Um, yeah. So, uh, and I know that um, that the, 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 the trust uh, that is trying to govern this from the first parish is is working to, to make all of this clearer and more effective. So we'll see. I hope they can. Um, other business and minutes. Uh, procedures on signatures on minutes. And this is your item. Can you can you speak to it, please? Uh, yes. Um, this is like really Elizabeth's item, <laughs> Elizabeth Hughes. Um, she had mentioned that uh, signatures are, are not necessary on minutes. Okay. Um, but as long as the the board votes on it, then they can be accepted without a signature. That is also um, my understanding. Okay. Because we I don't believe we've signed them before. You know that doesn't that doesn't mean that we shouldn't, and if we should, we will. <laughs> we should. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's look at the minutes of May seventeenth. 2022 and then June 21st, 2022. I hope you all had a chance to read over those minutes. Um, Sarah, you're the one that usually sees something that is in. Um, I've, I read them. The, the only comment I have is that I wasn't at the meeting for the second one, so I can't vote on those minutes. Yes. <laughs> Hip replacement. Go, oh, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I was trying to remember what I was doing. Man, you're right. That's what I was I doing. Don't, I, yeah. well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I even looked at my calendar to see if I was on vacation, and and I wasn't. And, I know you were. Yeah. Okay. And now I remember why. Yeah. <laughs> it is for a different reason. Um, <laughs> anybody have any um, emendations they'd like to uh, come in on in the May 17th, 2022 minutes? I I would just point out that. Um, this is not a correction or anything that um, the MOUs and the grant, grant agreements were discussed and, and approved or whatever we did, I guess. We discussed what they were and how they were looking and second a motion to vote in favor of them. That's just a Which meeting was that? 
um, for okay. under okay. review and approved memorandum of understanding, memorandums of understanding and grant agreements. The last little paragraph where we we voted to approve. Okay. So. Be implicit, but it, it is not, and I appreciate that, Nancy. Okay. Can anybody uh, recommend that we approve those minutes with the clarification that Nancy has offered? I hear. I wasn't changing anything. Oh, I, I, you weren't asking for a clarification. No, I was just making note. Oh, oh because I thought you. I thought I thought that was there. <laughs> so I started. No, to... no, they're there. I just was pointing out that we did do that. Yes. Okay. Terrific. So no changes on my part. So I move we approve the minutes as written. Thank for you. Can I hear a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Sarah? Aye. Nancy? Aye. John? I think he just said yes. He's on mute, Paul. Aye. <laughs> yes. Yes, Charles? Yes, there he is. Aye. Burton? Yes. And I, I do as well. Uh, so a unanimous acceptance of the minutes for May 17th, 2022, and the June 21st, 2022 minutes. Do I hear any emendations or changes to those minutes? I have a question on number one. Is it the Concord Municipal Housing Trust or the Concord Affordable Housing Trust? Does anybody know, Charles, maybe? Maybe municipal affording. EMA, CMA, Concord Municipal Affordable Housing. Affordable housing. Yeah, yes, I knew, right. I knew right. that it was affordable. Five, five, five letters. I looked at it and thought I'm putting in a letter in there that doesn't belong, and you're right, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I remember trying to learn what those, to say that, <laughs> practicing it. <laughs> so, Concord Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. Trust. Thank you. Um, any other uh, changes to those minutes recommended or, or comments? Mm -hmm. May I hear a, a suggestion uh, to accept those minutes, please? A move, movement to accept those minutes. Oh, somebody, please just move oh, to accept them. So many Thank you. <laughs> Seconded. So Thank Second. you, Bert. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Oh, I just yes. yikes. This a little one. I'm I'm rereading again something that I said that I attended the May 17th meeting. And I didn't remember to say that on the May 17th minutes. I'm so sorry. Okay. Well, I, but I'll the, talk to Ann. I'll okay, talk to you. Sarah. I'll talk to you. Hi. Uh, no, I wasn't there for those ones, that That's meeting. Uh, Nancy? Aye. John? Yes. Paul? Yes. Charles? Yes. Burton? Yes. And Diane, yes. So that's five acceptances and one, um, one um, uh, in, in, in absentia. <laughs> and so um, we do, we do um, accept them. And thank you so much. I. Uh, um, I would like to ask Linda Escobedo uh, before we adjourn if she has any comments about the meeting or any thoughts that she would like to add. So, um, I, I thought um, it was terrific that you've added a status update to, for, uh, for unfinished projects at this point that haven't been closed. And um, I think Burton picked the top one that needs to be addressed. <laughs> Namely, Junction Village, Christopher Heights. Right. It's going to be it's going to be addressed in so many ways, isn't it, Linda? It is. It is. <laughs> it's going to be a it's going to be a, a big <laughs> town wide discussion by the time. Yeah. And Stefan and Tanya, so grateful that you were with us. Do you either of you has have anything to add to our discourse? Um, I don't know that you have open comments or public comments on your menu uh, on your agenda, but. I guess my question is, and maybe I missed it, I apologize if I did, <clears throat> is there a decision making at the committee level in advance of the project submissions as to how you would like to target the money? In other words, you have a range and could you say if 
housing could be 20 to 35 percent? Am I the only? Say, um, <clears throat> well, Stefan, one of the things we do is there are certain there are certain expectations um, and for how much that we spend on each one. And if we do not spend up to a certain amount, we have to bank that money for future expenditures. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't disproportionately spend money on something else in one season. So let's say that there was a huge historical um, um, effort, some huge project that was going to take most of our money. Then we'd have to bank money for the other uh, three that were not appropriately funded in any one given year. Now, I've never seen anything like that that would dominate like it, you know, to that degree, but it, it, we have at times not spent sufficient amounts of money in one area. And therefore we put money aside and we said, all right, you know, in the future, we really need to, to up that, that category. Um, does that answer your question or is your question different than that? Well, that, that answers 80% of it, but I'm going a little bit further Okay. to say that you, from what you just described, it sounds like you would set aside the minimum required which would leave the maximum available for other projects. And my question is, would you consider taking a different approach and saying, we are gonna allocate the maximum to affordable housing, whether we have it or not, and whether we spend it or not this year, and we will thereby allocate less to recreation and historic preservation, even though you might have more than enough to spend and fund all of those projects. That's really my question is, is your do you process. set your your goals or your objectives for the year or is it driven by what applications come through the door well i i will try to answer that stefan and then i will turn to the wiser group of the committee to to address that in my experience um we 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 don't pre-allocate except by the guidelines the state has provided okay as to how that gets distributed um and then through the adjudication process, as we listen to various proposals and we hear the various urgencies that people have, we begin to adjust the funding accordingly. Uh, whether, um, and I, I don't mean to, um, I don't mean to in, in a clairvoyant way suggest that your question has anything to do with affordable housing, <laughs> but since it might, <laughs> Um, I, I can sense, you know, the, the found, I, I can sense the perhaps the reason for your very, very important question. I think it just going to require the very careful consideration of our committee as we move forward, other resources that we have, and and the constraints that the state does or does not. Because I don't think we've ever done it to such a disparate. I mean, last year we gave a million dollars to the um, Aspet River Bluff project. It was a combination of recreation and affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, whether we could have given that much money just to affordable housing is, is yet again, another question. Uh, and Burton, who has, is wise on all things, perhaps has a response somewhat different than my own. Yeah, well, I would just add to that. So Stephen, it's a great question. I think that generally we're responsive to the applications that are in front of us. The other thing that, that has come before, that, that's been a consideration of the board is we want the money that we allocate to be spent sooner rather than later. So while we, we oftentimes find ourselves in a situation where we've, <clears throat> we've, we've had a lot of applications in one area, so we, we set aside a funds to be spent in a future year, let's say on um, land conservation. I think that generally the committee wants to see the funds spent in the near term, which means we need to have an app, an active application in front of us. That doesn't mean that I don't think, you know, maybe given um, extraordinary town priorities, we might want to encourage, let's say, the affordable housing, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, committees and funding bodies to say, come forward with a proposal that, that would be maybe, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a big funding priority for the committee. Um, but I, I think that just setting aside money for it to be spent on a future date is, is not likely to be the approach we would take. Yeah, yep. well, that's not been our usual protocol, I believe. Does that answer your very good question, Stefan? Fully, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and thank you, Burton. 
Tanya, is, do you have a comment that you'd like to add or is everything okay at that end? Thank you very much. Just, just a thank you. It has been very interesting and informative. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Burton, your hand is still up. Do you have something more you want to add? Or, or no, you're just... <laughs> I'll lower that. <laughs> okay. Um, do I have a, a motion to adjourn? I'll make Thank that motion. Yeah, yeah Bert, there you go. <laughs> do I hear a second? Second. 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 Oh, we've gone beyond your 8.30 deadlines, but here we go. Only by 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, Burton? Yes. Aye. Yeah. Nancy? Nancy, aye. John? Yes. Paul? Aye. See you next month. Good. Charles? Aye. And Sarah? Aye. And I as well. Have a wonderful rest of the end of this summer. I hope next you meeting see. September September twentieth. That's first. right. No, I hope we can continue to meet. <laughs> instantly. Um, and I I would I would just like to say thank you. This is the best the, the best committee. I mean, it just is fantastic, and the the talents on this committee are amazing. And I hope that Eve Eisenberg, as a um, as a as an architect. Uh, can step in to help us in that regard, um, because I think that's been helpful in the past, John. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Anne, um, in the past, uh, Heather was able to distribute the applications um, to mm -hmm. our homes, which was beyond the call of duty. Um, I'm just curious, would you like us to pick them up from your office or what? what, what will happen on September 16th? I'm happy to do whatever the committee would like me to do. I would certainly post it up on the website and we'll have documents here, but if there are certain community, community members who would like things hand delivered, I'm sure. I, I, I think we, we can all come and pick them up. I mean, that, okay. Heather, that above and beyond, uh, uh, unless I hear it otherwise. No, I think that's right. I volunteer to deliver if yep. somebody can't Is go. Are you comfortable with going in and collecting them? Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe. Okay. Then then I think that we will come in and get them, but it's really important to have them on paper uh, because we're going to walk right all over them, use them. Uh, you know, I know I'm monastic about these things, but 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 if we if we have them on paper, we have a, a chance to really you know do the good work that this committee does every time. Okay. I know that's killing a lot of trees, but those are those are we're gonna save a lot of trees in the process. <laughs> there are good <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Okay. okay, thank you all so much. And listen, I know that this probably sounds unnecessary, but you know, it's a it's the end of the summer, and I hope everybody can find a time to relax. Take a deep breath. Um, because we're we're gonna need it. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>